Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Crafts Go Bloom. My name is Krista and today I'm going to be walking through a tutorial on how to make this no sew crochet eagle. I'm going to be breaking it down and explaining all of the stitches if you are a beginner, so no need to worry there. I definitely think that you'll be able to do this as long as you have just a little bit of crochet experience. The way this pattern is going to work is I will have it written across the top of the screen here. I will break down each round as we're going. This pattern is worked in rounds. I will explain each of the stitches and then show you how to do it. And if I'm still working too fast for you, go ahead and hit pause, finish out the round, and then meet me back here and we'll keep going with the pattern. If you would prefer to follow along with a hard copy, I will also have this linked down below. And this will have everything written out for you so that you can follow along with us. For today's pattern, we're going to need three different colors of yarn. We've got white for the head, yellow for the beak and the feet, and this brown for the bottom. And I made this particular eagle in Bernat Blanket, but today I'm going to be using Big Twist Posh. So for the white, I have the color Whipped Cream. For the yellow, I have the color Lemon Meringue. And for the brown, I have the color Brown Butter. We've got a lot of food themed names going on today. Now I'm going to be making it in Big Twist Posh. I've done that before, so I already know what it's going to turn out like. I've also seen this pattern made in Parfait Chunky and that turns out nicely. And I've made it in an acrylic weight four as well. Let's take a look at the rest of our supplies. First up, I've got a sharp pair of scissors. Any pair of scissors will do, you just don't want them to be dull. Next up, I've got my crochet hook and I'm going to be using a size four and a half today. And that's what I need to crochet tightly with the yarn that I'm using. So use whatever hook you need for the yarn that you're using so that you can crochet tight enough that you don't see any stuffing coming out through these stitches, that they get really tight even when we're kind of picking apart at them. So if that's not happening for you, you may just need to go down a hook size with whatever yarn you're using. Also, this green colored one is from a more inexpensive set off of Amazon. I think I paid around $20 for an entire bag and set of hooks and stitch markers and things, and it works great. This blue one that I'll be using today is from a more expensive clover set, and either one is fine. If you're a beginner and you have a less expensive hit hook, it's really not a big deal. The project's going to turn out fine either way. And I prefer these hooks with the ergonomic grips. You may also have a hook that is just metal, and that's okay too. I have a stitch marker here, and that's just going to mark where our round ends so that we know where to start and stop. If you don't have one of these, you could use a piece of yarn in a contrasting color, or a paper clip, or a bobby pin, or really just anything you can kind of stick over the yarn. I have a tapestry needle, and that's just a needle that's a little thicker than your regular hand sewing needle. We've got a large eye to be able to get our yarn through, and mine, and it's dull. Mine happens to be metal and straight, but they could also be plastic, and some of them have a bent end at the front of it. I've also got my safety eyes here and I'm using 12 millimeter safety eyes today. I've used 12 millimeter in both the Bernat and the Big Twist before. This is going to push through your project and then you will put this little washer on it and it snaps in there. We'll go over that when we get to that part of the pattern. And our last supply is stuffing. I'll insert a picture of the big box of stuffing that I use. I use polyfill that I buy from Joanne here in the US, but any stuffing that you have available is great. The first thing we're going to be working on for this pattern is the feet so that they are made and finished and set aside, and then we will tie them on when we get pretty far into the pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is take our yellow yarn and make a slip stitch, and I do that by wrapping it around a couple of fingers and just pushing up through the center and then tightening that down and putting it on my hook. And we're going to chain five. And to chain, you're just going to yarn over and pull it through the loop on the hook. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Now starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to make a slip stitch. And a slip stitch, you're just going to insert your hook, yarn over, and then pull through all the loops on the hook. And it can be a little bit finicky. We're going to do one more slip stitch. Be a little bit finicky to pull that through until you get used to it so I still kind of hold on and grab um, the part that's we're like pulling through to stabilize that better 
Next, we're going to chain two again. And starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch. And sometimes I still just grab the yarn and pull it over the hook too, if that helps. And then the second slip stitch, we're going to go back into that same base area that we went into with our second one last time. What we're doing is making those talons all go into the same spot. So one more time, we're going to chain two. And then slip stitch two, starting in the second chain from the hook. And then slip stitch again into that base chain in the center there. Now we've got our three talons, and then you should still have two chains working up the leg. We haven't done anything in those yet, so we're going to slip stitch in each of those. And then we're going to yarn over and chain one just to finish off. And then set that down and cut a long tail. And pull that through. And that's the end of our first foot. So we'll take a look at that. This is our top. If you look at it from the side, you can sort of see that um, the stitches on the bottom are a little more rounded and they're going to be a little more flat across the top. That might be hard to see if you're a brand new beginner, but as you were just crocheting, if you were just crocheting along this way, this is your top. So let's make a second one of those a little more quickly. Once you have both feet made, go ahead and set those off to the side and we will use them later, but not until we get this far into the bird. And we're going to start with our white. This is where we're gonna need our stitch marker, so have that ready to go. And we're gonna start this with a magic ring. And the way I make a magic ring is by laying the yarn over my hand like this and grabbing it with my thumb. I wrap it around the back of three fingers and make an X and I pinch that X with my thumb. I'm going to go across the back of my entire hand and grab it with my pinky. Then I'm going to take my hook and go under the first loop, grab the second one and turn. Move that down on my hook and then yarn over with this yarn that you're holding with your pinky and pull that through the loop. And then straighten everything out and we've got our magic ring. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to lay this over my hand and grab it with my thumb. Go across the back of three fingers, not going too tightly. Make an X and pinch that with my thumb. I'm going to go across the back of my hand and grab it with my pinky. Take my hook, go under the first loop and grab the second one, and then twist. And then go over here and grab the yarn that is on your pinky and grab that tight and pull it through. And if you still need to watch that a couple of times, it's totally okay. Just back up and do that again before we get going. It does get much easier with practice. For round one, we're going to start with seven single crochets into this magic ring. The way you do a single crochet is to insert your hook and yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, and pull through the two loops on the hook. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So that's two, three, four, we have to move that guy because I keep bumping him, five, six, and seven. Now to close your magic ring, you want to hold on tightly to the single crochets that you just did and pull that end. Just pull tight enough to close it so that there's no hole in the center. You don't want to pull it so tightly that you break your yarn. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker in the last stitch that we just did. And that's how I know where to stop when we are going around next time. For round two, we're going to increase in every stitch for a total of 14 stitches. And the way you do an increase is by just doing two single crochets into the same space. So you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that's one single crochet. And then do another one in the same space. So I've got four, five, five. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Take out my stitch marker and do stitches 13 and 14. If you leave that stitch marker in there and crochet around it, sometimes it takes up enough space that it, whoops, sometimes it takes up enough space that it causes a little like bump in your stitches that you'll be able to see later on. For round three, we're going to increase and then single crochet one. And we're going to repeat that pattern seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So we're going to do that increase where we do two single crochets into one space and then we're going to move over and just do one single crochet in the next and then we're going to go back and repeat that so we've got an increase next and then a single crochet and so i've got six stitches so far seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then 21. For rounds four, five, and six, we are going to single crochet 21 all the way around for a total of 21 stitches. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So we just completed round four. Put that stitch marker back in and you can see it's starting to cup. The inside is where your tail is. When you were doing this amigurumi, we're crocheting along the outside of it all the time. So go ahead and do rounds five and six. You're just going to single crochet 21 again for a total of 21 stitches. Just make sure that you do two more rounds of that. After finishing rounds five and six, you're going to have something that's looking like this. We're working down the top of the bird. In this case, we're making that eagle. And for round seven, I'm going to stick the instructions on the screen here. It might look a little difficult at first if you're new to this, but we're going to just break it down and do a little part at a time. So we're going to start by doing 10 single crochets, just like we've been doing before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on that 10th one, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then we're going to stop there. And we're going to grab our yellow and we're going to be switching to that. The way I do that is just to have about a six inch tail. And then we're going to just yarn over with the yellow and pull that through. And that's going to be our yellow for our beak. Now what I'm going to do here is grab the yellow tail, 
and leave that down and out of my way. I'm going to hold it with my, my last two fingers so it's out of my way. I'm going to take the white working yarn and I'm going to put it in the front. And then I'm going to be working with the yellow yarn. Now for this eagle beak, we're going to be doing a double crochet, a triple crochet, and a double crochet all into the front loops only of the next stitch. And so what that means is when you insert your hook, you're actually going through a V of yarn. And I know that it's a little difficult to see on camera, but if you're looking at yours, you'll be able to sort of pull apart those two loops and see that there's two loops on your hook right now. And all we want is that front one. So we're gonna hook up under just the one loop. So I've got my white in the front here. We're gonna we're gonna crochet over that. And we're gonna start by doing a double crochet. To do a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over. Remember, only get that front loop. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And then a triple crochet is the same idea, but we're gonna yarn over twice, going back into that same front loop only. Yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You're just doing it three times instead of two. And then we've got another double crochet, but this one's going to be just a little bit different because we're going to color change at the end. So yarn over, insert your hook in that front loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then you're going to put your yellow yarn down and grab the white yarn again and pull through the last two. Now, leaving your yellow down and out of your way, we're not using those right now, you're going to single crochet 10 to finish out the round. Make sure that you really are going into that very next crochet, single crochet space after the beak and that the stitches aren't like laying down on it and covering one up. And so we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. If you're getting caught up in your yellow yarn, just flip everything over, straighten that out. And for round eight, we're gonna start with 10 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we're gonna go into the back loop only and we're gonna do a single crochet. I wanna move this yellow working yarn off to the left a little bit. I wanna move this yellow tail off to the right. And then this is just the white tail from the magic ring. We just need to move that out of our way. So we want to go over that yellow tail, go in the back loop only that we left from the last round and do one single crochet. And then same thing, we're going to put the yellow working yarn down and go over it. Otherwise it's going to stick out the front. So we want to put that down on the inside. We did our one single crochet under the beak. We're ignoring the yellow beak stitches and then we're finding that next white single crochet and we're going to do 10 more single crochets. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. And then we're gonna pull out that working yarn and take a break for a second. First, we're going to cut about an even size tail here on the yellow. And then we're actually done with the yellow because we've already made our feet and now we've got our beak. And if you crochet over the yarns in the way that I was showing you, you're able to take these two yellow ends and tie them into a couple of knots and you can tie them tightly And that's just going to hold our beak in place a little bit. We've got that eagle beak with that triple crochet in there, so we're really seeing that hooked beak there. And while we're taking a break, let's grab our eyes. Now the eyes go between rounds six and seven, about four stitches apart. So we're going to count our rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
and we can count over one, two, three, four stitches. Mostly what we want to do though is make sure that our eyes are centered on our beak. I think that's that's looking good. I think I just have a little bit of beak sticking over there, but my eyes are pretty centered. So once I've got those in, I'm going to hold it with my thumb and press it through to the back and then add this little washer and we're going to snap that down. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other eye. We're going to hold that, pushing it through to the back. Don't push it all the way through and pop the eye out. That can happen sometimes. And then add that washer and snap it down over those ridges. And then our eyes are done and we can go back to our working yarn. For round nine, we're going to be switching to the brown. So I'm actually going to back up one stitch and do the color change just like we've done before. So I'm going to pull out the last single crochet of round eight. We want to remember that because I just took my stitch marker out and we're going to need that. So we're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop and then hold tight on that. And then we're going to grab the brown, grab about a six inch tail, yarn over with the brown and pull that through. And then I'm going to pull that brown tail and the working white yarn to the front and hold on to that and get that stitch marker back in there. I'm also going to cut a tail on the white. And I want to cut a pretty long tail on that so that we can crochet over it, but then we're going to be done with the white. So now I've got a white tail and a brown tail and I'm crocheting over those for as, as long as makes sense. Um, for round nine, we're going to crochet 21 for a total of 21 stitches. So I'm just going to start going over both of those, making sure that the white is touching the white and the brown is touching the brown. If you get them reversed, you're going to see a brown line in through there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops, nine, and if I have the chance and I have a long enough tail, I will keep using it until it gets too short and just doesn't quite make sense. I'll show you that in just a minute. You could also choose not to do this and weave them in later. I just don't like to have to weave in anything if I can avoid it. So we've got 10, 11, 12, a little finicky around the beak there, so I'm slowing down, 13, 14, 15, 16, and now that brown tail is just getting kind of short, so I'm just going to hold that down and finish out the round crocheting over the white only. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 and 21, and then when I'm done with this stitch, I'm just going to take all these tails and tuck them in there. We're done with every single one of them. So we can really push them up to the top and keep them out of your way for the rest of the project. Now in round 10, we're going to start making this little point out here for the tail feathers. And that's going to help it stay stable and also just make it look a little more like a bird and not just a cylinder. So we're going to start round 10 by single crocheting one and then we're going to chain three. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet two back down that chain. One, two, whoops, there we go. And then the third single crochet is going to go in the same space that you just started in. So we, we started the round by doing one single crochet and now we're going to do another one right in that same space. And then just five regular single crochets after that. One, two, 
three, four, five. Now we're going to make the wing and we're going to make it very similarly to the beak. We're going to do five double crochets all in the next stitch and all in the front loop only. We're going to make sure they all go into the same stitch, always going in the front loop only. So to make a double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now I've got four and five. Now the next thing we're going to do is nine single crochets, but as you can see, sometimes your wings will lay down. So you want to make sure you pick them up, move them out of the way, and you're really finding that next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we're going to make the second wing again. We're going to do five double crochets in the front loops only of the next stitch, all going into the same place. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we've got two, three, four, and five. And at this point, I'm going to remove my stitch marker. We're going to be moving where the end of the round is, so it's okay to take that out and get it out of your way. We're going to start by doing five single crochets, making sure that we move that wing out of the way and find the next space. One, two, three, four, five. Now the sixth one is going to go across over here. There's a little bit of a gap left in there. So we're going to fill that in with the sixth crochet, single crochet. And then we're going up the loops of the chain for stitch seven and stitch eight. And at the end of round 10, you're going to have 36 stitches, including the wings. For round 11, we're going to single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to crochet one in the back loop only under the wing, just like we did with the beak. And then we're going to skip over the double crochets. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five double crochets, ignoring those and going into the next single crochet that we made in that brown. And we're going to do nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and then nine and we're going to do the same thing under this wing we're going to single crochet one in the back loop only that we left behind there and then we're going to skip over one two three four and five double crochets and find the next space after that and we're going to single crochet eight to finish out the round so we've got one two three four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now you should have a total of 27 stitches. For rounds 12 and 13, we're just going to single crochet 27 going around for a total of 27 stitches. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. And we're going to do the exact same thing for round 13, single crochet 27 around for a total of 27 stitches. And today we're working on the eagle pattern. I also have some videos out on my channel for a lot of my other birds. I have a couple different sizes of chickens. I have a cat, a dog, a bat. Also have some different fruit patterns for watermelons and pineapples. Um, everything that you're going to find on my channel is a no-sew crochet pattern and most of them are really beginner friendly. I I break all the patterns down just like this and we just kind of go through them row by row. So if you're looking for some more no sew crochet patterns on my channel, I have an entire playlist of all of my tutorials. Twenty six and twenty seven. For round fourteen, we're going to start by doing four invisible decreases. And the way you do an invisible decrease is by going into the front loops only of the next two stitches. So go through those, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And you're taking two single crochets and you're turning them into one. So we've got two of them. You're going to go through the front loops only of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So we've got three of those and four. Now we're going to do three single crochets. One, two, three, and now three invisible decreases. One, two, and three. Now we're going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to end this with three invisible decreases. And you should have a total of 17 stitches at the end of this round. And then when you finish with that, go ahead and pull out your working yarn. We're going to add the feet next. I always love this part when you flip it over and you start to see what it's really looking like. It's looking really cute. Okay, let's move our hook out of the way and grab those feet. And I'm actually going to use my hook. To place the feet, what I like to do is hold my hook up to the eyes and go straight down from the eye. Let's see which stitch is better here. Try and go with that one. And then I'm going to push my hook up on one side of the stitch grab one of these tails and pull it through and then I'm going to go on the other side of the stitch that I'm looking at and I'm going to pull the other tail through. And then we're just going to let that sit for right now because we want to make sure that we have them both lined up before we permanently attach anything. One, two, three, four. I think that's going to look right. I'm going to try to have four stitches in between them, but honestly, it doesn't matter as long as they line up with your eyes and your beak and everything looks centered. It, same as with the eyes earlier. It's more important that it looks straight when we're looking at the entire thing than how many stitches are in between it. 
All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Another way you can check if you're not quite sure is to just hold your hook up to the beak and see are the feet an equal distance away from the hook on each side. So now I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna tie the tails of the right foot together and I'm gonna tie the tails of the left foot together. I'm not going to tie the right foot to the left foot. If you do that, you're going to pull your project in and it's not going to work out right. And then once everything is tied up, I just take those tails and stuff those on in there. And speaking of stuffing, we're going to add our stuffing now. I'm only going to add stuffing to about round 12 because the rest of it will just sort of pop out and get in our way. We're only going to do one more round in this pattern, but there will still be a hole big enough for you to get a little bit more stuffing in there. So don't worry about the fact that you can't quite stuff the tail yet. And I like to add more stuffing than I think that I need. And right now, I might just have too much in general. Let's see if we can get it all in there, out of the way. I like to add a little bit extra because as they get played with and squished, the stuffing will start to sort of mash down in there and lay flat. And I don't want it to get lubbed on and played with. And then in a couple of weeks, it's just completely flat. So I add a little bit extra on the front end to try and help with that on the back end as it's being played with. Now for round 15, we're going to do eight invisible decreases and one single crochet for a total of nine stitches. Same thing, gonna go through those two front loops only. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And as I'm going along, I'm holding down my stuffing so that it's not working its way into my stitches. Like that just happened. If you're not careful, you'll actually just crochet some stuffing right on into things. And that can be kind of a pain to remove if you don't notice it until after you've closed up your project. So I'm always checking to see if that's happening. And I do have a little too much stuffing in here right now. So I've got to be extra careful that I'm holding it down out of my way. And I go a little slower on this round because I'm doing an intricate stitch like that. I'm also trying to hold the stuffing down and I'm trying to work around those feet. There we go. Almost done. What are we at? Six, seven, eight. And when you get around to the end there, if your stitch marker is also in your way, just go ahead and keep track of what stitch you're on and get that out of your way. And then we just have that ninth single crochet. And then I'm going to yarn over and chain one to finish off and I'm going to cut about a 12 inch tail. I'm going to pull that through. Now is the time if you need to add any more stuffing because we're about to sew this closed. So I'm going to grab a little bit more and stuff it into those tail feathers because now we've created enough stitches to hold the stuffing in there. And now I'm going to thread that yarn tail onto my tapestry needle. Hold the feet down out of my way and we're going to go in the front loops only going around weaving into each one of the stitches in the front loops only and you're going to want to hold your stuffing down out of the way again every time i go through a loop i'm giving it just a little bit of a tug to cinch that down a little at a time if i go through all of the loops at once and then i try to cinch it all at once it can um, sometimes fail and sometimes it can snap your yarn also So I'm just taking it bit by bit, picking out any stuffing that's coming up. And then I usually just give it one more 
Whoops, we got a lot of stuffing on that one. I'm going to stick my needle in there and just pull it all back in. And then we're going to close that up really tightly. Now I'm going to go back inside with my needle, skirt along the edge, and come out over here under the wing. Make sure I didn't bring too much stuffing along for the ride. And then I'm going to go through those loops of those single crochets that we did before to weave in my tail. I find that that just really locks those tails in there when you get to the end of the project. And it helps those tails stay if you're doing anything like uh, putting it through a washing machine or something like that. And I usually just go until I get to the other side of the bird. Cut that tail, making sure that I don't cut the actual project, and then pull out that little yarn fuzzy that's always there. And that's it, guys. You did it. You finished making your own no-sew crochet eagle. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what kind of yarn did you use and what size did it turn out. I used Big Twist Posh for the one today, and I've used Burnout Blanket in the past, so you definitely get a different size here. And if you used like a worsted weight or any kind of weight four, you're gonna you could use um, like a Bernat velvet as well. You're gonna get an adorable little keychain. Don't forget that the pattern is linked down below if you would like to have a hard copy, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.